Hey everybody, this is Athletes and Antiquities, and in today's video, I'm going to be a Debbie Downer about Pokemon signed cards. So, as the, as my intro suggested, I am talking about signed Pokemon cards today. I don't know if I've ever, I've ever really done it to any deep dive before, but the reason why I want to talk about it is because, you know, I've seen a lot of crazy prices for signed cards recently. And, you know, things were insane during COVID, like card prices for autographs got wild for like, um, like the artists signing their cards, like, cause like events were closing and stuff like that. It was crazy. Things got absurd price wise. But even now after that, things are still crazy, uh, maybe to a lesser extent, but prices are way higher than I personally would have expected. And I'm just gonna talk about like why I personally um, am not big on autos. This, this isn't meant to like um, dump on people that do collect them. I think that the idea of someone signing a card is very cool, but my, my only hiccup is the price. Like if, if us artists signed cards were like 50 bucks each, I would be like all in on them. I think that's awesome. But just like, whenever I look, I'm like, oh, I, I wonder what this guy, I like this signed card. I wonder what this guy's auto goes for. Like, it just like blows me away every single time. So in this video, I wanna talk about some autographs that I have and then compare sports to Pokemon and then like real, like real, um, global figures autographs to Pokemon to kind of illustrate why I think things are so crazy. So I only have a few autographs. I, um, I only have a few here. This one actually isn't even an autograph. This is just a, a signed memorabilia, or sorry, it's just a memorabilia card because um, I think they're similar in some capacity. These are game used um, jersey swatches of these three players, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, and Eli Manning, three of the most dominant quarterbacks from the 2000s. The three of these guys I counted for, like, I think it was like, um, in like, in like a 10 year span, these three were in eight of the 10 Super Bowls. It was like absolutely crazy statistics. Like these guys are the face of 20 years of football. And these are all game worn um, jerseys of like, in the, uh, like, like Peyton Manning's is like part of his um, name is on that. Eli Manning, you got two colors there. So it's maybe something for the numbers or something on, on his uniform and Brady's is just red, but I loved this card. Uh, I got it graded myself. I got a five because thick cards like this are really hard to grade. And, um, but it was like 50 bucks or something, like maybe four years ago. Um, so I think it was a steal for that price. Some other things I collect, um, Troy Polamalu, my favorite player. Um, someone got this signed at a training camp. And then Walter Payton. Uh, he is, he passed away in 1999, I believe. So he's been, uh, he hasn't been around for 25 years and didn't sign very many things to begin with. And he's one of the most dominant running backs of all time. So this is a very special autograph to me because it's, it's, it's a way to remember like a really impactful player to the league. And he was a phenomenal person as well. There's a whole award, the Walter Payton Man of the Year award named after him for exactly that being like uh, an upstanding person in your community. So it's a very important card to me. Um, I talked about Troy, um, and then just some Halo stuff. This was an autographed um, card from a, an old TCG, not TCG, sorry, it was a collectible card game. In 2007, Halo made some cards, and it was like, there was normal things like base cards and hollows and stuff, but there was very rare cards that were actually sketch cards, sketched like on the card by the people that did all the illustrations for Halo. And then I have a, a signed, um, very exclusive set from Mega Bloks Halo with a lot of like the notable people from the Halo universe, like designers and engineers and stuff. But this isn't about them. I just want to show you, I do have some signatures. I do like signatures, but today is about, we're talking about Pokemon. I want, today we're talking about why I, in my opinion, Pokemon prices for autographed cards are just wild to me. Like they're, 20x 30x what i would personally pay for them so maybe i just don't appreciate it and you can let me know in the comments if you do collect them that's totally fine uh just kind of i just want to hear like um where people stand on those cards like uh you know do you collect them who do you go after stuff like that i'd love to hear about it because i'm not really involved in that space but so i'm going to put some cards on screen i'm excluding cards that are very valuable to begin with because the auto adds less to that card like for example 
a um a, uh in an arita arita signed a first edition base set zard that sold for four and a half k that's a pretty high price and i'll put that on screen but i'm not, I'm not really considering that that crazy because that's a first edition base zard like that's an expensive card to begin with his autograph is now what's making that worth 4k another one probably the best example of this uh fukuda signed a japanese gold star rayquaza that was graded a PSA 10, like the card itself, not the autograph, the card itself was a PSA 10, and that sold for 14K. Again, makes sense. It's, I mean, not makes sense, but you can justify that price more because it's such a rare and sought after card to begin with before he signed it. But I wanna show you some cards that aren't necessarily that valuable before they sign it, and the insane prices they go for. So like, I'm gonna go lowest to highest here, and I'll put these on screen. These are all within the last like six months or so that I could find, maybe a little bit more than that for some of them because some of them are a little more obscure. But Arita, Arita signs everything. Arita is like the most common signature. Um, and he he had a base set two that sold for one and a half K. Base set two Zard sold for one and a half K. You know, one and a half K is a lot of money, but this is on the lower side of these autographs. Then we got, um, next up I want to show Jimeno. Jimeno signed a lot of, uh, he illustrated a lot of amazing cards, so people love his signatures. Jimeno autos go for about 2k for like a not super desirable card to begin with, or not super valuable, I should say. Um, so Jimeno's at 2k. Naoki is at 2k. I'll show a Naoki card. I'll go through these a bit quicker. Tokia sold for 2k. A lot of these are in that 2k range for like the not top echelon arts or cards or anything you know um yoshida also sold for 2k then you get to makuda uh i'm sorry fukuda he goes for a little more because he's well known for all the gold stars i believe it's a man i'm not actually sure but i think it's a man um he signed all the he illustrated all the gold stars so fukuda even the non-gold star cards go for about 4k so that's like on the higher end of like the average illustrator but you can get really crazy um you know the the, the granddaddy of them all Ken Sugimori, we're gonna, we're gonna put Ken Sugimori out there. And yes, um, he does not sign anymore. He hasn't signed for some time now. So all of his autographs are from years ago. Uh, but you know, even with the amount that's already out there, his cards are insane value-wise. Like he's uh, like, for example, in 2022, uh, he signed a card that sold for $33,000. Like that is an insane amount of money. And I know a lot of people are saying it's such a rare car, it's such a rare autograph for such a prominent person, but I'm gonna kind of show you later on in the grand scheme of these, uh, in the grand scheme of these people, they're still largely unknown for a global setting. These people are very popular in the hobby, but even in the hobby, like out of let's out of a thousand people in the Pokemon hobby that are, that would consider themselves fans. They, they, you know, they play the card game. They collect the cards, they, they play the video games, whatever it may be. How many of them do you think even know who Ken Sugimori is? You know, not not very many. He's, he's I would consider, he's like a micro celebrity. Um, he's very important to the people like us that really care about this hobby. But in the grand scheme of things, not many people really know about him. And 33K for an autograph is insane. But yes, 2022 was a while ago. His prices have gone down a bit since then. Um, but you know, they're still insanely high. In December of 2023, I'll put this on screen as well, a card of his sold for $17,000. It's a lot less than 33K, but $17,000 is still insane. And you might, that might not really hit home how crazy that is to you, but I'm gonna compare these signatures to athletes and other prominent outside of like Pokemon figures to show you how much more their autos sell for for how less impactful those people are and how like how many people just know about them it's just crazy to me so like michael jordan michael jordan is probably the most well the, the most well-known like american athlete to ever play any sport you know I, I wasn't alive in his 90s run with the bulls but everyone on the planet knew who michael jordan was and everybody on the planet was obsessed with Michael Jordan. He was he was the king. He had his sneaker line that was selling like hotcakes. He was the most dominant player in the most exciting sport to watch. Like 90s basketball was a spectacle. His jersey, like a signed jersey of his, 
$250. And yes, Michael Jordan has signed a lot more things than those illustrators for cards. But still, a lot more people also know about Michael Jordan and want Michael Jordan's autograph. That, that's like an objective. Like more people, I think more people want Michael Jordan's autograph related to his price than any of those other illustrators that I met. Uh, sorry, that, that, I, that I mentioned earlier. Like $250 for a signed jersey of his that's been authenticated. All of these autographs I mentioned have been authenticated. $250. But you know, maybe, maybe, maybe you think, well, like Michael Jordan, people in America are the only ones that care about him. He's in the United States of America, NBA, or he was. You know, people in Europe don't care about Michael Jordan or Asia or anything. Like, and first of all, I don't know if that's really true because Air Jordan is popular everywhere. But let's go for a Nash, a, a, an international athlete, Messi, the most well-known soccer player in our generation. Messi, again, he's probably signed a lot more than um, than these Pokemon illustrators, but him and his entire team from the 2022 World Cup team signed a jersey. They signed a bunch of jerseys, but those jerseys with the with the certificate of, authentic, of authenticity sell for $400. And as a reminder, lesser known Pokemon artists like Tokia um, and Naoki and stuff go for about $2,000. So you can get what, like, uh, five of them, F five, uh, messy 2022 team jerseys sign. Like, that's crazy to think about, but let's go out of athletes. You know, maybe people just don't really care about athletes on a, on a large stage. Let's, let's talk about just impactful world leaders and important people in U S history and world history. We're going to kick things off with Nelson Mandela. Like he's one of the most well-known people that advocated for, um, freedom in Africa um, from oppressive regimes. Uh, he signed. He signed a lot of these. Again, to kind of go against my own argument, he signed a lot of these. But his book, A Long Walk to Freedom, very famous book. His signed copies of those sell for three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars compared to Pokemon illustrators selling for you know thousands. It's just personally, it's just insane to me to like to like make those comparisons. Let's go with probably my favorite item on this list, just because it's crazy. It's just sick. Um, Barack Obama, the former president of the United States, signed a wanted poster of Osama bin Laden. You know, because the U.S. killed Osama bin Laden, the terrorist, um, under Obama's, um, under his presidency. And Obama <laughs> signed a wanted poster of Osama bin Laden, and that sold authenticated for 1.3. Like just me personally, that would be crazy. Even if like, whether you like his politics or not, it, it irrelevant. That's an insane piece of US history and world history that had world ramifications. And for 1.3K, that's just, if you come, if you, if you say the Pokemon prices around, around 2K for the average illustrator, if you say that's normal, then that's the, the Obama signature on that piece of memorabilia is a steal. A, the wanted poster of Osama bin Laden is signed by him. That's just a crazy combination. Like, if I had to pick one, I would pick that in a heartbeat. Uh, let's go to a little bit more, um, more grand stage. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Oh, I, I apologize if I, if I said his first name wrong, but Gandhi, his, his last name. His autographs, 1.7. We're getting close. We're getting close to Pokemon Illustrators. 1.7K for an authenticated Gandhi autograph. Let's go one step further. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, he was, he's probably the most well-known um, uh, fighter of like oppression in the United States. Um, his like, his way of like doing things peacefully and stuff was so impactful to the, to the whole country. 2.6K, 2.6K for a, a world leader, a, a US leader and a world leader who was, um, who was assassinated, 2.6K. That's crazy, guys. But okay, we, we got we got to blow these out of the water. We're 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 in small potatoes right now with with MLK, which is a crazy thing to say. Uh, don't clip that. That sounds bad. But J.R.R. Tolkien, we're gonna step it up a little bit. He's the he wrote the Lord of the Rings in 1937. Probably one of the most well known one of the most well known book series of all time. Possibly the most well known of all time. 
uh, from in 1937, he wrote them and letters that he wrote from not from later than 1937, but still 10 K they haven't sold yet. This one, I couldn't find a sold listing from recent, but this is one that's available on eBay at the time of this video, 10 K and it's not selling. So it's probably worth less than 10 K for a J.R.R. Tolkien, one of the most famous authors of all time, autographed letter. Crazy, 10K. Again, I wouldn't pay 10K for that. I'm not a huge Lord of the Rings guy, but you have to appreciate the history there. That's, that's, I, I, I can't even like put it into words, like comparing that to a Pokemon Illustrator. It's just wild to me. And we're gonna end this video with the most insane comparison. Um, it's uh, particularly if you're American, who's the most famous American you can think of? I'll give you five seconds. Most famous American you can think of. George Washington, you know, he helped found the country. Uh, first president of the United States. You know, he signed the Declaration of Independence, 1776. George Washington signed letter with a certificate of authenticity from 1786. How long ago was 1786? Quick, quick math, I don't know, but it's pretty pretty old. $23,000 for sale. It hasn't sold yet, it's probably worth less than 23K. Again, I couldn't find a sold one. This is a listed on eBay autographed letter. Is it really considered an autograph if it's like from, they weren't doing autographs. I guess it was a signed historical document, I should say from 1786, George Washington, $23,000. Let's go back to Ken Sugimori. <laughs> I get it, Ken Sugimori is one of the most well-known and one of the most impactful people to the Pokemon hobby. But should he hold a candle to George Washington? Like, in my mind, one of the two, one of the two things is true. Either Pokemon autographs are way, are way overvalued compared to other autographs, or people like George Washington, like <laughs> stonks, this is a buy. He's gonna go to the moon. If, if Ken Sugimori is as stable as 17K, I would think G George Washington should be 100. Like it's, it's so wild to me. And again, I don't mean for this to come across as trying to diminish Pokemon autographs. I think they're awesome, but I just don't get it for the price. I think it's crazy how much people spend on them. Um, it's, it's, it's not my cup of tea at that price. Like I said, if it was 50 bucks, I'd buy them all day. Consume more, that would be a crazy, that would be an awesome signature. $100, sure, $200, sure. But 17K, for God, God, it just like, it doesn't make sense to me. So I really wanna hear what you guys have to think about that. Like, do, like, do you just, ha um, how do you justify those prices? Do you think they make sense? Do you think we're in some sort of a, a Pokemon Illustrator bubble? Um, or, or, or do you think, you know, that's just normal, you know, uh, they're well-known people in a, the largest IP in the world and people like their signatures on cards. So um, I just wanna know, like, where do you stand on that? Do you think I'm being a negative Nancy and um, like this makes sense? Or do you kind of agree with me that I just, that these prices are a bit crazy? Uh, let me know in the comments, but yeah, thanks for, thanks for watching. See ya.